energy. In our modern world, we need it more than ever before to meet our needs. People and machines consume vast amounts of energy every day. For a long time, people have relied heavily on supplies of energy from traditional sources. Today, we are developing promising alternatives. Throughout history, humans have used various types of energy. Winds moved the sails of ships. Animals and humans labored on the land. Eventually, steam engines and internal combustion engines replaced the more traditional ways of getting work done. Today, we use several forms of energy to perform tasks, give us light and heat, and move people and products. The majority of the energy consumed worldwide is produced by burning colossal amounts of coal, oil, and natural gas. We call these fossil fuels. Fossil fuels were formed millions of years ago from layers of dead plants and animals exposed to intense pressure and heat. Today, we dig or drill deep into the earth to extract these ancient deposits of fossil fuel. Unfortunately, these traditional supplies are non-renewable. In other words, they will not last forever. How long will our supplies last? Some predict that as our global population continues to grow, the Earth will run out of oil and natural gas in about 60 years, and coal in about 200 years. In addition to its limited supply, the use of fossil fuels has a negative impact on the environment. Our extravagant consumption has caused damaging air pollution as well as increased levels of heat and carbon dioxide. More and more, people are convinced that these consequences of burning fossil fuels have contributed to global warming. There's more to the picture. Many of the largest oil producing countries experience periods of political instability. Nations that depend on foreign oil are vulnerable to price hikes and shortages of fuel. The good news is that there are promising alternative sources of energy. The use of these energies has gained in popularity over the last several decades. Alternative energy sources have received so much attention because they are abundant, much cleaner than fossil fuels, and available all over the world. Some of these alternative energy sources include solar, wind, bioenergy, hydropower, geothermal, and hydrogen. Let's take a look at these fascinating and promising options. Earth's greatest source of energy is the sun. Consider the sun as a giant nuclear reactor that sends out colossal amounts of solar energy. There are two ways in which solar power is typically used to generate electricity, photovoltaic and solar thermal. Solar power plants that use photovoltaic technology need a lot of sunlight and in order to produce a good supply of electricity, it takes a lot of space to collect the sun's energy. This is a solar power plant, and um, it's made of uh, photovoltaic panels that are uh, made out of uh, crystalline silicon material. Uh, the whole idea of a solar power plant like this is that you cover a very large area with the uh, silicon material, and we have direct conversion of sunlight to electricity. And this conversion is the result of a collection of solar cells made from natural materials. 
The basic material we use is silicon, and that's obtained from uh, sand, the sort of stuff you find on beaches. Uh, the sand is processed and purified, and we end up with a, a crystal of very pure silicon, which is sliced and processed. Uh, it's the same material that goes into computer chips, uh, but that uh, crystal slice actually forms a solar cell. So we have a solar cell here, and by just duplicating these cells, connecting them together, uh, we end up with a solar module. Uh, by putting modules together in the form of an array, um, we can start the building block for a solar power plant and put a number of arrays together to make an array field, the uh, type of thing you see here, uh, we have a solar power plant. In addition, solar thermal technology enables the use of mirrors to concentrate the sun's heat. This heat is used to power a generator to make electricity. Due to its environmental friendliness, the use of new solar technology has gained in popularity over the last several decades. There are advantages to using solar energy. Uh, as you can see, uh, solar generation is clean and it's quiet. There's very little movement here and there's no pollution at all. So it's a very clean form of energy or energy conversion from sunlight to electricity. It's also renewable, which means we're not depleting or reducing any of the resources on Earth at all uh, by using solar energy. Although solar energy is a promising renewable source of energy, there are disadvantages. The cost of the materials used to convert sunlight to electricity is expensive. Currently, it is cheaper to produce electricity from traditional sources like coal. There's another issue. There's no guarantee that it will be sunny tomorrow. Maybe it will be cloudy. And of course the sun doesn't shine at night. That is, the sun is an intermittent source of energy. There's no promise that this resource will be available when we want it. So, where did much of this solar energy knowledge come from? NASA scientists conducted a lot of research during the 1960s and 70s. This technology provided the perfect source of electricity for orbiting space vehicles. Thanks to the space industry, a lot of time and energy was put into photovoltaic technology that is shared all over the world today. As solar technology continues to become more efficient, it will continue to grow in international popularity and remain an excellent option for meeting much of our energy needs. The uneven heating and cooling of the Earth's surface causes wind. People have harnessed this powerful energy for a long time. Thousands of years ago, sailors used the wind to propel their boats along the Nile. For hundreds of years, wind has powered the giant blades of Dutch windmills to drain water from lakes and marshes. The American landscape was dotted with windmills during the mid-1800s. These metal giants harnessed the wind to pump water for livestock and farm use, and then later to generate electricity. They remained popular for nearly 100 years before they began to fade out. Today, wind energy is being used once again. Vastly improved from earlier versions, these high-tech wind turbines can generate a significant amount of electricity. Wind turbines, much like the propeller blades of an airplane, rotate as the air lifts them. This rotation powers a generator, which in turn supplies electricity. Long rows of these high-tech wind turbines operate together on wind farms. The electricity generated on these wind power plants feed into a local utility grid, which distributes the power to customers. Although there are several types of wind turbines, the three-bladed horizontal axis turbines are the most widely used. Even though turbines can look very different from each other, they generate electricity the same way. Wind energy holds a lot of promise. It is clean and renewable. No matter how much we use today, there will always be wind for future needs. The growing popularity of this renewable energy source can be seen worldwide. India is employing wind turbines to bring electricity to remote areas. Small fishing villages in Mexico are also enjoying the benefits of wind energy.
And because coastal winds are generally faster than the inland winds, Northern Europe is planning for the construction of offshore developments. Although wind energy is a resourceful way of producing electricity, it does have a few challenges. Wind is an intermittent source of energy and doesn't always blow when needed. In other words, wind has to be used at the same time the electricity is being generated. It takes a large number of wind turbines to produce useful amounts of electricity. In spite of the fact that wind turbines require large areas of land to generate a lot of electricity, they typically require only 3-4% to of the land on which they are located. This allows compatibility with, and the continuation of, what the land was originally used for. Also, it's simply not feasible to install wind turbines just anywhere since not all areas are windy enough to power them. They are best suited for areas that experience fairly strong and consistent winds. The use of wind has been one of the fastest growing energy sources worldwide for the past several years. Not only is there an adequate supply of wind, but it also serves as a promising alternative to burning fossil fuels. Biomass refers to plants and the energy they have stored from the sun through photosynthesis. The use of this energy is what is referred to as bioenergy. The word bioenergy comes from combining biomass and energy. Sources of bioenergy are common things. Trees such as pines and maples. Forestry wastes such as branches and small trees. Agricultural crops such as corn agricultural wastes like wheat straw and corn cobs, and municipal solid wastes of paper and yard clippings. Uses of bioenergy are as simple as burning firewood for cooking and heating, or as complex as fermenting corn into a liquid fuel called ethanol. Ethanol can be blended with gasoline, allowing us to stretch the limited supply of fossil fuel even further. Because it's inexpensive and easy to use, bioenergy is widely utilized. It supplies nearly 15% of the world's total energy supply. Many developing countries use much more, in some places meeting up to 35% of their energy needs. As our technology has improved, an increasingly common use of bioenergy is to use all parts of a tree to manufacture wood pellets. These highly efficient pellets can be made from trees removed when forests are thinned. When we're harvesting the material out of the forest, we're taking the material that good science management indicates needs to come out of the forest. So it's small diameter material. It's generally 9 inch material and smaller, but occasionally there may be a 18 inch tree. The good news is that as crowded trees are removed from our forest to make them healthier, we're able to use these thin trees as another renewable energy source. So we go into the forest and where they indicate is, are the trees that we need to cut and they want removed, we'll go in with the shear and we'll shear them at the base. And if it's for a clean fuel, we actually will debark and delim in the forest. In this process, nothing is wasted. Although the use of biomass is a creative way of using some common materials that might otherwise be thrown away, there are some major concerns. For example, the burning of wood is one source of air pollution, and the production of ethanol requires using some fossil fuels. Using bioenergy has been part of civilization for a very long time, but the modern use of biomass simply cannot replace the dependence our growing populations have on fossil fuels. Bioenergy can complement other renewables, but is not capable of supporting the world's energy needs alone. The motion of water can be put to work. Dams hold back large quantities of water at some point along a major river. When this stored water is released, the force is used to spin the blades of a generator to produce electricity. Transmission lines then transport the electricity for distribution. 
This is commonly referred to as hydroelectric power or hydropower. Because the sun is responsible for the water cycle, some consider hydropower as a form of solar energy. The heat of the sun causes water to evaporate into the atmosphere where it condenses. Water then returns to the earth through rain and collects in streams that eventually empty into rivers. One of the advantages of hydropower is the ability to provide power on demand. Electricity can be produced in seconds. Another advantage is that no fossil fuels are burned. Since its source of energy is supplied by water, which is a part of the Earth's natural water cycle, it's considered a renewable source of energy. Even though hydropower is the oldest form of generating electricity, it has not always been a reliable source. Long-term droughts can be unpredictable and can influence the supply of electricity. Considering the fact that hydropower provides more than one-fourth of the world's electricity, global droughts can have quite an impact on its production. Although dams do provide clean energy, they present some unique problems. The flow of rivers can be affected by the construction of dams. The spawning paths of salmon are interrupted and their numbers are decreasing. Sediments that carry nutrients to plants and fish downstream are altered and sometimes blocked. Because humans have already tapped the majority of large rivers all around the world, the location of new dam sites is limited. Upgrading existing facilities, as well as constructing small-scale facilities, appears to be the future path for hydropower. Earth will always have a water cycle, and the availability of the power of falling water will continue to be an energy source. If you've ever seen a volcanic eruption, you have witnessed the incredible heat stored deep inside our planet. This heat energy, called geothermal energy, can heat reservoirs of water deep underground, often miles deep. Steamy geysers and bubbling hot springs are examples of geothermal phenomena sometimes seen on the Earth's surface. One application of geothermal energy is to use it to generate electricity. An example of this can be seen at the Geysers Geothermal Facility located in Northern California. Steam is extracted from underground reservoirs and piped to turbines. As the steam spins the turbines, electricity is generated. After steam and hot water have been used, they're injected down wells and sent back into the reservoirs. This source of energy has proven to have other unique applications. Geothermal water is used to heat homes and businesses, provide hot springs for resorts and spas, allow fish farms to raise fish that require tropical temperatures, heat greenhouses that produce flowers and food, and even provide just the right water temperature for alligator farms. Geothermal energy is one of the cleanest energy sources available because geothermal plants don't burn any type of fuel. Scientists and engineers are working on ways to improve the technology that will make it easier and more cost-effective to continue to explore and drill for geothermal energy. Because geothermal is a renewable and clean source of power, the future looks bright for this type of energy. The sun is a giant ball of energy. This energy comes from an element called hydrogen. Hydrogen can be used as a fuel or converted into electricity. Hydrogen is considered by many people as the energy source of the future. Uh, very simply, it's just hydrogen, uh, the element. Hi hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. It's all over the place. Making electricity is one way of using hydrogen. A fuel cell takes hydrogen and combines it with oxygen to generate electricity. This process holds great potential as a future energy source that is clean and renewable. When using hydrogen in an engine, 
The combustion process produces water vapor. Yes, that's right. The exhaust of this hydrogen-fueled vehicle is nothing more than steam. In addition, hydrogen is being combined with other fuels to boost performance and reduce pollution. And here we blend hydrogen with compressed natural gas and enjoy uh, cleaner emissions from that vehicle. Uh, and in fact, you're probably putting less pollution into the atmosphere when you drive through the streets than you're taking in into the, uh, the carburetor. One out-of-this-world application is the use of liquid hydrogen and oxygen to propel space shuttles into orbit. In addition, onboard electricity is provided by hydrogen fuel cells. Plus another life-saving benefit, the crew drinks the fuel cell's byproduct, water. But even a fuel as promising as hydrogen has to gain popularity in the public's eye. In the early 1900s, hydrogen was used to lift zeppelins. These lighter-than-air ships were popular for luxury air travel. That all changed when a disastrous event created a long-lasting negative impression. Public opinion, I guess, is somewhat negative on hydrogen. The, the first thing people think of when they think of hydrogen is probably the Hindenburg disaster, flames and explosions. But, you know, um, gasoline is also a very dangerous fuel, yet that is commonly accepted. People think nothing of going to a gas pump and filling their tank with 10, 12 more gallons of highly flammable gasoline. Even though the Hindenburg ended in disaster, one result of this terrifying event was standards that demand safer handling and storage. The reality is, like many other energy sources, hydrogen is reactive and must be handled and transported with care. The use of hydrogen presents another challenge. Because it does not exist naturally on our planet as a gas, we must make it. Hydrogen is produced by extracting it from sources such as coal, natural gas, or water. Currently, this process is more expensive than using more conventional fossil fuels. The use of hydrogen is promising when it comes to the production of electricity, as well as fuel for cars. With continued research and improved technology, hydrogen looks promising for providing clean, renewable energy. It's considered by many to be the fuel of the future. The energy industries around the world have grown steadily over the last several decades. The technology and advancements continue to expand and develop as we explore new ways to provide renewable sources of energy. Much of the popularity and social acceptance of these alternative energy sources depends upon the public's understanding of basic science concepts combined with personal experiences. As these students explore the world of solar energy and hydrogen fuel cells, they are learning the valuable lesson that science and technology are not separate from society, but are an important part of it. Experimenting and applying knowledge through these types of meaningful experiences helps to lay the foundation for this and future generations to better understand and support the energy sources available to us. Our energy future depends on the integration of old ideas and new technologies. Hopefully we'll have the resourcefulness and wisdom to use alternative energy sources that are efficient, plentiful, and favor our environment.